Greetings, scribes, sorcerers, and sorceresses. I'm Kevin, and this is 11 Elden Things in the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. Rhea Lucaria is the legacy dungeon in the center of Lyurnia. Lyurnia. Whatever, how do you have whatever you pronounce it. Legacy dungeons have tons of secrets, and because my name is Kevin, I can magically reveal 11 of them to you. Anyone else who does this idea will be expelled from the Academy. Before I get to the list, I'll brief you on what info I will be discussing, as well as providing a map-only option for those who want a more blind experience. So stick around, spoiler-free gang. Here's the general guidelines on what I may be covering in these videos. If you're worried about spoilers, you can read the coverage in the description. Because Legacy Dungeons provide difficulty to the dots on a map method, I will be more generous with the gameplay portion of the video. I will still be avoiding heavy spoilers, but for those who want even less information and want the map dots only, you can go to this time or click the map only timestamp in the description. You have 10 seconds starting now to skip ahead if you want. Feel free to explore the map there. But for everyone else, let's get to the list. The first stop on our tour starts just outside the Western Academy walls. Just nearby the key that lets you get into the Academy yourself, you'll find the entrance to the Academy Crystal Cave. It takes a stone sword key to get in here, but the contents of the cave will award you with a Crystal Staff, Crystal Release Spell, and Terra Magica Spell. Why is this location on this list? Well, at the end of this cave, there is a passageway that leads you to an isolated location within the actual academy. You'll be up on a high vantage point, and as long as it's not dark or raining, like it was when I came up here, try to get a good shot. You'll actually get a good vantage point over the rest of the academy. You can see what the potential pathways are before you actually explore the location, and, and it's a good photo op location too. Now that you've gotten a good view of your surroundings, let's head into the actual academy itself. The second spot on our tour starts here at the bottom gates. You probably noticed these sigils before, and realized that interacting with them sends you back to the gates. What you might not have realized is you can run past them. Actually, you can just walk right through them. Going along this path here will allow you to find a merchant and a celestial dew, and going along this other path will allow you to find a golden seed and a summon location for a certain NPC encounter. Along the bridge, you will find a summon sign that when interacting with it, rather than an NPC joining your world, you'll join their world. I believe in order for this to show up, you must have had a previous encounter at this location here in Limgrave. But once that's squared in a way, I would come here, interact with the sign, and you'll get the Rapture of the Mists Ash of War. The NPC that you will be helping has gotten your back before, so it only makes sense to repay the favor. Moving further into the Academy itself, Location 3 can be found just near this ledge. Rather than crossing the bridge, I recommend you hop through this window. Along this path, you'll be able to find the Carrion Knight set, which if you didn't pick that as your starting class, you can now get the armor set for yourself. Number four is actually really close to number three. You might have realized you can ride this water wheel up to continue your journey through the academy. But what you might not have realized is that you can ride it back down to find some extra goodies. Riding the water wheel back halfway down will reveal a ledge where you'll find the Avianet Soldier Spirit Summon. Riding the water wheel to the bottom will allow you to find a Lost Ash of War and the Longtail Cat Talisman. A quick note about the Longtail Cat Talisman, this talisman is supposed to negate fall damage. What that means is any damage that would hurt you from falling is negated, but any damage that would kill you from falling still kills you, as evident here. Another bonus about this area, you can actually get this tidbit from a certain NPC. If you were to die from getting grabbed from the enemy at the bottom of this water wheel, you'll actually be transported to Volcano Manor. How safe the endpoint of that transportation is, I won't say, but if you do want to take a little detour, there's your chance. Our fifth location can be found after entering the classrooms of the academy. Heading out this pathway and moving to the left will reveal a closed off room, or so it may seem. Here you'll be able to find the body with the conspectus scroll, which will unlock new spell recipes for later, but also hitting the wall behind the body will reveal a hidden path that'll allow you to get to the Elevenous Glintstone Crown item. When going for this item, make sure to watch your step. Location 6 isn't too far off from Location 5. Just after you moved up the path towards the boss gate, you can hit this bookshelf here to the left and it will reveal a hidden passageway. 
Heading through the secret path will bring you to a hidden library where you'll be able to get the comet spell and another item behind the counter. Going back to the front of this room will reveal a ladder which climbing up it will have a secret path in the back where you can drop down and then drop down again to get the Grave School Talisman Charm. Secret paths in secret paths? Someone's got trust issues. Thing 7 can be found in the area above the debate parlor. Going out this path to the right and then hopping over this banister here will allow you to get above the debate parlor where you will find the Radagon icon, which is a charm useful for casting. I believe this charm is one of the eight legendary charms you need in order to get the charm achievement. Charming. Thing 8 is located in one of the corners of the academy courtyard. Heading out this path to the left and then left again will reveal a tiny glintstone crab. Money. Killing this crab will Money. award you with the Carlos glintstone crown. Another big head for your collection. Thing 9 can be located in the roof segment of the Legacy Dungeon. Heading here and hopping over the banister will allow you access to a shortcut and the path to the roof. Following this path, eventually you will come here where carefully parkouring up this section will allow you onto this roof where you'll be presented with two paths. I recommend you take the left path first. Traveling along here will allow you to find the full moon crossbow and it'll present a way for you to get back to the right path. And traveling down this path will reveal another crab, which when killing will give you the Lazuli Glintstone crown. Another big head. I'm seeing a pattern here. We're not done with roofs yet. Thing 10 can be found off the path of Thing 9. Following the path here will bring us to the roof above the church. Head to this spot first to get an imbued stone sword key. These are limited in number and will be useful in a future video. Carefully crossing the rafters and onto the chandelier will allow us to get the glintstone key, which lets us access the academy. Why would we need a second key to access the academy? We will get to that in just a minute. Aside from this, going outside will reveal another glintstone which will give you, you guessed it, another glintstone head, or technically two heads. Back inside the top of the church, I recommend you drop the ladder shortcut and grab the Shattering Crystal Spell and Azura's Glintstone Staff. Thing 11 can be achieved now that we have that extra academy key. But where would we use an extra key? Well, here in early Lernia, there was a church with an NPC named Thops. Talking to him will reveal that he wants to get into the academy, but he doesn't have a key. Befriending him will allow you to buy certain spells, and you'll be able to give him the key so he can get back into the academy and continue his studies. Once some time has passed, Head to the area between the classrooms and the water wheel. Here you will find Thops hard at work studying away. Visiting him will award you the Academy Glintstone staff, and he'll even share a spell of his own creation. My boy's making spells of his own. I'm so proud of him. <laughs> a quick bonus segment. I didn't want to include this in the actual list itself because it is far later in the game, but just outside of the main boss gate, if you've continued a certain NPC's questline far enough, here you'll be provided with a choice, where interacting with the yellow summon sign will assist the certain NPC, and interacting with the red summon sign will assist a different NPC in attacking the first one. You have to choose. Personally, I went with the yellow one. I don't want to spoil whose signs these are, but just remember that at some point you will have to come back to the academy to make your big choice. So that was 11 Elden Things in the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. I hope you all liked the video. I did my best to sort of show the things I was talking about without revealing too many spoilers. It was really difficult to showcase the locations without revealing too much. A quick note about the bonus things that I sort of glossed over, like the imbued stone sword key and the summon signs at the end. When those come up again in a future video, I will explain them more thoroughly, so you don't have to worry about missing out on anything. I just decided to include this in this area because they are important hotspots and you'll get to them eventually. For those who skipped ahead, here's the map. No spoilers from this point on. Again, this is a legacy dungeon, so I don't know how useful the dots on the map method is going to be, but hey, I tried. If you have any feedback, let me know. If there's an area you want me to cover sooner rather than later, let me know. But yeah. Thanks for watching. Remember to feed Torrent. Praise the ring. And I'll see you in the next one. Hey! Peace.